Hello and welcome to your questions answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. In this program, we take the questions that you send us and Father Gruner answers them. We have discussions about them and continue to send them to us, please. Questions at thefatimacenter.com. Today we have a question about the rosary, not the rosary, the Hail Mary. Hail Mary. The person says, I know the first two parts of the Hail Mary come from the Bible, but where did the final part of the Hail Mary come from? That is, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. So what can you tell us about well, that? Well, first of all, I'm sure you know, John, and our, our, our questioner also knows that it comes from the Bible. It's in Luke's chapter, first chapter of Saint, the Gospel of St. Luke, when the angel first approaches, he didn't say Hail Mary, he says Hail, full of grace, but mm -hmm. obviously speaking to her, so just since she's not physically present, we, we put her name in there as well. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. That's all from the Arch Archangel Gabriel. And then, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus comes from Our Lady, rather to St. Elizabeth, greeting Our Lady. Uh, and that's all in chapter one of, of St. Luke's Gospel. The second part, of course, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Actually, the, the term Mother of God, St. Saint Elizabeth refers to her as the mother of my Lord, mm -hmm. the mother of my mm -hmm. God. But she's, And the, now the part, pray for us sinners. Well, it's, uh, the church has given us that, but it comes from, first of all, we're all sinners, except for our Lord and Our Lady, everyone else is a sinner. Even the Pope is a sinner. So it's defined, in fact, in the First Vatican Council, the Pope is a sinner. He's not impeccable, as to say the same as a sinner. Mm -hmm. so, so pray for us sinners. And obviously, uh, we wanted to pray. I mean, her intercession is, is the most powerful of all the, angel, of all the angels and all the saints. In fact, all the angels and all the saints together could not outweigh Our Lady's prayer. So, mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, it's to our advantage to ask her to pray for us. Uh, and, and there are saints who tell us and doctors who tell us we can't get to heaven without her prayer. So, um, the, uh, so and when, when should she pray for us? Well, obviously, we only live, in two, we only live now. We, the past is gone, the future is not here yet, we're living now. And uh, so we need her help now. And then obviously the time we know all of us at one point or other are going to come to die. And at that point, that's when we're going to need her help the most. So we ask you to pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Yes, and the Hail Mary is a very um, natural development according to uh, Catholic faith and Catholic teaching because, as you know, Father, it follows the exact same pattern as the Our Father. Our Lord said, the, the Apostle said, teach us how to pray. And when you pray, pray thus, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The, you know, you can, you can finish sure. it in your head. But the first part is the part where we give praise and adoration. To God. An God, honor God to, God. Father, to God. the Father. And then the second part, we ask for things that give we us need. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. So those the, are the two th things we need the most. We we need uh, not only our physical bread, we need our spiritual bread, and uh, which is the Holy Communion. And of course, we need all the graces that we need to go with uh, the spiritual bread. Uh, and then obviously, we being sinners, we ask for forgiveness. In this case, God is the one who forgives us, but Our Lady is the one who prays for us to exactly. get us to that point. Yes. Yeah, so that's so the Hail Mary is structured exactly the same way as is the Our Father. And I, I, I've never done a study of this, but I'm thinking it's probably the only you know, common prayer in the Catholic Church that is structured the exact same way. And uh, we, don't, we don't adore Our Lady, we give her honor, and that's what the beginning of the Hail Mary does. Yeah. And then at the end, we're asking her for her help. And it's interesting too, with Protestant, you know, in the face of Protestants who say we shouldn't be honoring Mary, well, the part that honors Mary is directly from Scripture. Yes. Directly from Scripture, the, uh, the uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, I mean, um, um, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed art thou among women, and that came from... And, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, which yeah, is also came from Scripture. came from Elizabeth in, yes. in, in, in and, Luke. And hail, hail full of grace, and this also came from, the angel, the angel came from heaven, and he, this is his message. So it's God the Father saying that uh, through the angel to give, give her this praise. Our so, Lady is the greatest... Um, shall we say masterpiece? We looking at a sunset as a masterpiece of our Lord every day. It's little, it's different, but but the the masterpiece of all masterpieces is Our Lady herself. And so the the Hail Mary goes back. Um, I, I don't exactly know. Come to think of it, uh, when I don't know if anybody really knows when it actually came uh, into. I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking you know at least the seventh century, eighth century, maybe even before that. Prior to that, but devotion to Our Lady goes back to well, the, the very beginning to of the, the apostles. Yeah, yes. Because I mean, I've, I've been in, in India, and you find a painting of Saint Luke, uh, Saint Luke the, the Evangelist, and Saint Thomas carried that painting from Palestine 
to India, it's a painting of Our Lady. It's still there. In, oh, that's in the, in, in the cave, right? Uh, well, no, it's, it's actually on Mount St. I don't know if we went there. Yeah, we, we went there, yeah. Uh, but there's a place there where he was uh, martyred up at the Mount St. Thomas. And, yes. And, oh, anyway, there's a, the painting there. You find the St. Lucas painting of Our Lady is also in Rome. Again, it was carried by the apostles to uh, to Rome. It's uh, it, it's on the it's Our Lady, it's known as in locally as the Salus Romani, the Our Lady's health of the Roman people. But it's actually painted by St. Luke and, and the apostles. So they had pictures of Our Lady, and they had the, and they exposed them, and they and they venerated Our Lady by praying to her even then. You know, even you know, in fact, it says right in St. Luke's Gospel, uh, the first chapter that, or is it the second one where? All generations will call me blessed. She's prophesying this will happen, and this, of course, has happened. That the generations that are with God will praise Our Lady, because she is the greatest masterpiece of. And why did why did God give her to us? Primarily for for our own salvation, so if she can intercede for us. Despite our best efforts, it's not very good. But as Saint Alphonsus says, Our Lady has so much merits and that she can has enough merits to save everyone if simply we ask her for her help. So. And we know, of course, uh, the the Hail Mary is uh, is pleasing to Our Lady because that's the prayer that is the the main prayer of the Rosary. Yes, we say fifty three of them, and at Fatima, Our Lady said, "Pray the Rosary every day, exactly. not just one Hail Mary every day, yes. but at least five decades of the Rosary yes. every day." Yeah, and for those people who criticize us for counting, Our Lady is the one who teaches us to count. Yes, <laughs> pray, pray yes. yeah. So yes, that's uh, so it comes from the the Church, but the Church is led by the Holy Spirit. And has been led by the Holy Spirit, and although we may have some some churchmen sometimes getting things wrong, but the church has taught for centuries cannot be wrong. One of the arguments that the Council of Trent uses for proving that the the Vulgate version, the Latin Vulgate version of 1600s was was, was reliable, was the church has had this for a thousand years, and the church, the Holy Spirit, would not leave the church in error for a thousand years mm -hmm. on such a text. So it's it's not only you know, it's not only uh, nice literally, but it's solid for, for dogma as well. And this too could be applied to the church's use of, yeah. of the Hail Mary. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, all right. Well, there's again, you know, all these topics we could go on. To, uh, there's a lot to say. It's, uh, it's really endless what we can talk about regarding the Hail Mary. But uh, we'll, we'll cut it here and um, look forward to see you on the next broadcast. Thank you. Let me just add that St. Thomas preached for 40 days during Lent on St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas on the yes, Hail Mary yeah, alone. During Lent, 40 yeah. days straight. Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing that. So thank you, and uh, we will see you on the next program.